attempting to do, as I understand it, is to create a healing environment <coughs> totally. by using this DVD. Totally, yeah. To me, it's, it's a function of creating environments where, you know, I was picturing, you know, in China, I, I see these pictures of the cities in China, mm -hmm. and they have, what, 50 cities of over 2 million people or something, and they warehouse people. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, what is it that I could do that could make someone's life feel better in the context of working six hours, six days a week of 14 hours a day? You know, and this was my little bit of medicine. Maybe that's what I was looking at. Wonderful. Thank you. The healing power of art. And it's funny because the, the next question was really about world cultures and, and really what's going on. I know, Richard, you go to Peru and uh, South America. I'm wondering, and this is something that you guys might be experts on, you might know nothing about, is there, in the history of this indigenous and in the various cultures around the world, is, are there similarities in how they view sound for healing? Or is it the Peruvians are in a certain way and the Chinese culture perhaps it deals with it differently? And I don't, I don't know if any of you have any information about that. Each culture is going to have its own flavor, you know, like Mexican food and Chinese food are very different. But, you know, if you go back to the first, probably one of the first things people did when we were humans was go, <laughs> you know, and started singing. It's, it's just such a natural thing. You go hunting, you make your baskets, you do whatever you're doing, and you gather around the campfire at night and sing songs and tell stories. And that's, that's universal. Mm -hmm. That's every place. And isn't it humans who really brought the element of rhythm yeah. into and created music out of that sense of rhythm, out of that sense of clapping? Crickets might disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> and the chipmunks, right? The Alvin and the chipmunks, who <laughs> were very busy with musical work. Uh, for yeah, I mean, we are, we are rhythmic beings. One of, my, one of my friends is a phenomenal Australian didgeridoo player. Uh -huh. And, you know, people come to him and say, I don't have no rhythm. You know, I can't. Rhythm, I'm white, you know, whatever. It's like. <laughs> and he says, Is your heart beating? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you breathing? And that's yeah. true because yeah. all of the systems have its own rhythm, its own frequencies, its own balance, its own homeostasis, if you will. And for example, like you said, the heart has a rhythm, has a balance. The respiration, again, has a rhythm, has a balance. Even the peristaltic motion of digestion, everything in the body is based on rhythm and frequency. And so it's phenomenal to see how, one of the things that really blew my mind was, uh, real quickly, was how everything was based on seven. I mean, there were seven colors that, that, uh, that influenced with different frequencies for healing, seven um, tonal vibrations, or seven notes actually, because an octave from one note to the next note. Um, there are seven chakras of the body, which are the main energy centers of the body for healing where it takes place. Uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, I mean, it just goes on and on and on, seven days of the week, phenomenal stuff. But uh, whoever our creator was did a phenomenal job in putting everything together really one well. Of the, one, of the, one of the similarities in almost the entire world is the basic music. I'm not talking about the more sophisticated uh, uh, Indian music rhythms, but almost everything is based on 4-4, which is kind of like how the heart beats as well. You know, you don't get together, people won't get together in groups generally and sing songs in something complicated like seven. They'll get together and sing in four, and we walk in a four-four rhythm. So that's kind of like the basis that is transcultural, very much so. Things get more sophisticated as people's minds get more sophisticated with the music, but the rhythm, it's the rhythm, it's the beat. You know? From a musical point of view, there are, there are other similarities, such as density. There are, um, so that would include spaciousness or complexity. There would be um, the, some of the harmonic open uh, tones that sounding, these are simultaneously sounding tones and what their relationship is. The fifth and the fourth, these are important uh, intervals in music that seem to appear in, in multiple places. Uh, rhythmically, as you say, the walking, the two, the duple of walking, um, even the tempo that, that people tend to write music at often has much to do with body rhythms mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. And if you, actually I had a funny story. One time I was working with a, a woman from Peru who uh, was talking about this festejo groove, which is a 6-8 kind of a rhythm. 
and I didn't understand it. I wasn't getting it. I was like, okay, I can count it. I can sort of, okay, I'm almost there. She said, oh, never mind. She stood up and she started to dance. And immediately I went, oh, of course. Okay, now I understand. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, before we go on to our next question, I want to remind our viewers that you can be part of this broadcast too by calling in to 818 991 6137 and the phone lines are open.